the image gallery is next. So this is a complex element because it's not just about showing images, it's also about interactivity. And WooCommerce comes with a built-in behavior which implements like lightbox and you know we can move over and zoom into the picture and we can move left and right and stuff like that that's one and second for variable products if a variant has an image then when this variant is selected the image is displayed in the gallery so woocommerce javascript code for for the card handling uh, takes care of that. So, of course, we could implement all of this in custom code. Uh, we could use Pangrow interactions or just plain JavaScript to implement a similar functionality. But for now, and I think for maybe for many cases, default WooCommerce implementation is good enough. Um, but we have to make some adjustment on a, adjustments on account of that. We have to respect like the special layout and the classes that are expected uh, by, by the JavaScript library um, in WooCommerce. Okay, so let's get started. So, okay, here we have A kind of uh, this is already prepared with WooCommerce requirements in mind so uh, I will show you why what I mean by that so let's go select the section and add where is it product image gallery so again we see that this will generate product image template and mode will be WooCommerce. Alternative would be custom but we, we want to use WooCommerce uh, interactive support for the image gallery. Okay so what do we need? Wrapper. WooCommerce requires that the content of the gallery is wrapped with a div element. You know, it should not be a, a section or article or main or anything like that. It needs to be div. And this div cannot be like the main element where, where the function, the action is added. So that's why we added the first div as a wrapper around our gallery. So let's select it, the first div. Okay. So the element that represents the main image and the element should be or contain an image. So let's select our image, main image, and then thumbnail size. We can just use default, which is WooCommerce, um, think single or gallery thumbnail yeah gallery thumbnail and link to size we can link to full and then we can use default styling of for the um, uh, gallery but that's problematic because default styling is implemented implemented with with like floats and these columns it's very difficult to get it displayed correctly unless the whole page is using the default WooCommerce classes for the layout. So in this case we prefer to keep this uh, unchecked and we will implement our own styling. So okay let's try to export it. Okay we got the error Product image gallery. Lightbox requires that images are wrapped in a div and a. Select the div as the main image. Okay, so 
instead of selecting the image directly, here the main image, we should select the div that is wrapping the A that is wrapping the image. So let's try that. Instead of selecting this, the image itself, we select the A div wrapper of the image. Okay? It went through, so let's see what, what we got. Okay, so we have Bini and we have thumbnails and we have like zoom and we can open an overlay. So it kind of works correctly, but uh, there is no styling. And uh, if we inspect the, the DOM, once, like WooCommerce, the, the JavaScript code for, for their gallery, it, it adds a bunch of elements, like the trigger, this one is created dynamically, and then the whole thing is, is wrapped into another new dynamic div with the class flex view viewport and then all the images are there and the wrapper we had to create and then all the thumbnails um, and because we are not using the full WooCommerce styling which comes with its own like special requirements and it's not worth the effort in my opinion we have to style all of this manually. Um, and because it's created dynamically, we cannot actually add like bootstrap classes on, on these elements because they are dynamically created by JavaScript code. So we have to create like CSS rules that target these elements so that we display them in a, in a nicer way than what, what we have now here. And I have good news for you. I already prepared that styling. So it's kind of boilerplate code that you, we will use here to implement the styling and also you can use in your own projects to kind of uh, as a starting point for your own gallery designs. So we need to include that on the page. Where is it? It's in gallery CSS. And again we, we include it in the master page. Just drop it on the page so that it's included like everywhere. You know what whatever is added to the master page is then included on every template page that is using this master page. Okay, so let's export, go here, reload. Okay, so here we have. Now like it, on purpose the styling is minimal. This is meant to be a boilerplate code that you can easily modify. But it has like all that you need. So let me walk you through through styling. So that you you know what what is where. Um, maybe we can just do it here. Huh? Maybe inspect. Yeah, maybe not. Let's go back there. Okay, so first of all, this is like the, the top wrapper and we set position relative. That's so that any absolutely positioned element uh, is contained within the this element so that it doesn't go out. And then we have the trigger 
that is the this one. So it's just a round thing with an icon. And then before this provides like the border and the, the circle. And then this again is similar. We, we, we won't go into details like for each one. You can just experiment with um, uh, with um, inspect panel. Okay, and then this is the flex viewport. That's the main kind of element that wraps the images. And we set the margin bottom and the background color. So why do we need background color? Be because we don't enforce the dimension, like you see picture images, we want to display whole images so that products can be properly seen. And here, so that this area is not white, we, we use background image for the surrounding areas. And then this is again wrapper with, with some animations so that they're like softly animated. And this is, these are images and we are using aspect ratio or tree and object fit contain so that we display the whole image and so that the whole gallery is kind of fixed width and fixed height but the images are still kind of dynamically fit into that and again we need to set the background here and these are now thumbnails okay and then, then for, for the thumb, thumbnails we are using grid so just change this to, to change how it looks. And then if object fit is available, we also use object fit on, um, on thumbnails. So yeah, and that's it. It's kind of more or less simple boilerplate code for the gallery. And you know, what's not was not so hard to do it, right? So we we got all these features and still we use our custom design and also if we now select a product variant with an image poof, it is shown here as well and clear it's it's back it's gone so the gallery code the gallery and, and add to cart they're connected and that's another reason why it makes sense to use the default WooCommerce gallery implementation. And if we take a, a sneak peek behind the scenes, the pro product image, it's um, not that nice, right? It's like going through all these images and taking care of, uh, of uh, passing correct attributes so that our like the the classes and, and attributes that we need to implement our layout kind of go through and are passed correctly to WooCommerce um, yeah to these functions so yeah so again I think Pinegrow provides a lot of value here. It you know it, it takes care of coming up with with all this code, which is not so simple to write by hand, so that we are able to implement you know, custom layouts for our eShops.